Hi, this is Juan, and in this video, I want to tell you about cell stress, adaptation, injury, and uh, death. So you have many cell types in your body, and here is a cell, and this cell has to do some work. This cell is differentiated cell, so there will be some kind of demand for this cell. If it's a muscle cell, it's like lifting a weight. That is a demand for this cell. And this cell is built to be able to output and meet the demand. And the cell will live its life with daily input, demand, and daily output, some kind of a function. This is good. But sometimes you can have uh, a lot of demand. And one common way to create this kind of a high demand is when there is less oxygen, cell tries to do its normal function. This is not easy for a cell to do. And when you have this kind of high demand, cell still wants to output, but cell has to first adapt. And then a cell can either meet the demand with the adaptation or it's going to fail. And the failure to adapt is going to lead to cellular injury. Um, cellular injury can have wide range of outcome. It could be mild, a cell is broken, but a cell can still do some job. Or it could be severe, so severe that the cell has to die. And let me give you some intuition about uh, cellular injury. So here's a cell, here is the nucleus of the cell, and the cell has many mitochondria that creates energy for this cell. Also, cell has a lot of ribosomes that make proteins for this cell, all the proteins. And finally, the cell has its plasma membrane that surrounds it. Um, if you have a problem, like mild ones, maybe you have a broken here and there. That's okay, mild. But if you get a problem during this adaptation in your plasma membrane, nucleus, mitochondria, or your ribosome, then this problem is pretty bad. It's gonna affect the entire cell and the result is a severe damage, most likely cell death. Now let's talk about a few ways of cell death. First way is to die via apoptosis. It's another way of saying cellular suicide, programmed cell death. So here is a cell, and this cell is gonna go through an active process using energy to fragment its nucleus, fragment its stuff, break internal stuff, and the cellular membrane is actually going to deform and the cell is now going to shrink. It's like a star dying. Uh, it's an elegant death that doesn't cause too many troubles for the surrounding environment and there's no inflammation. As opposed to apoptosis, necrosis is swelling way of cell death. So here's a cell and the cell is uh, messed up. And necrosis is basically the sum of all the damage. And uh, if you just sum up all the damage, and if damage passes some threshold too bad, then you know cell membrane is going to leak, stuff is gonna break into pieces, this environment is going to swell, immune cells will come. It's a very loud way of uh, dying. And this process is passive. And finally, another way of uh, cell death is autophagy. And I think autophagy has some of all recycle. Cell is actually using active energy to recycle its component. For example, here's bad protein or structure. Cell is gonna surround it with a lysosome and the cells are going to uh, break that into pieces, amino acids and recycle that. So if you do too many of the autophagy process, then eventually you will end up breaking up the cell and the cell is going to die. It's an active process of uh, eating and recycling the cell. And I want to say one more thing about apoptosis. Um, there's a value in fragmenting your genome, right? It's because sometimes cells are infected with uh, viruses that can integrate its genome. If you just break the cell nucleus into pieces and if this thing leaks, you're basically spreading the bad sequence to your neighbors, right? But if you go through the fragmentation before you uh, die, or even just maintaining the membrane itself so nothing leaks, so just doing these increases the chance of killing the sequence and uh, preventing your neighbors from getting uh, infected. In fact, when T cells, NK cells do their job of killing viral infected cells, 
they activate apoptosis of the uh, affected cell. So apoptosis is this smarter way of uh, killing a cell. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the ways cell can uh, adapt. With high demand, cells can increase in its size, and this is called a hypertrophy, or cells can decrease in the size called atrophy. Sometimes it's good to get small to do the job, so the process can be efficient, or sometimes you don't have enough nutrient and you have to cut down your size. Um, the next way of uh, adaptation is increase in the number of cells that work together in that area, and this is called hyperplasia. So plasia is like stuff or things or structure. Increase in the number of uh, structure or cell in this case. And another way of uh, meeting demand is actually changing the structure. So here's delta, and this is dysplasia. Cell is going to try to do its work, but it's going to lose some of its um, characteristic shape. And this is kind of bad because cancer can be born uh, if this process goes too far. And finally, maybe a less related to adaptation, but there's a term called the metaplasia, which means just change of cell type completely. Maybe the cell is just going to stop doing that action and be like, I'm done, and start doing completely different thing, pivoting uh, in a startup sense. A big pivot. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about some of the intuition behind this kind of a change. So here is the stress, and this is the x-axis time. And if you you know put some stress, then cells function is going to drop. But here is a time threshold where on the left side you can reverse this. Uh, damage on the right side, the damage become irreversible. Cell function drops. But as you remove the damage, maybe the function can go back and increase again. But once you pass some threshold, depending on the cell type, etc., then stuff becomes irreversible. So what happens next? Well, first thing that the cells are going to do is to just die. They just give up and they just die. Maybe this is smart because you don't want cancer, you don't want uh, dysplasia, metaplasia, all these things to uh, result in cells that go out of control. So maybe this is a good team effort to just die. Um, but if you keep putting this stress, then the death process is not going to uh, keep up or fail, and the cells start to go through some kind of invisible damage. I say invisible because I'm going to write two more that are going to be visible. If you keep putting the stress and damage, then cells are going to go through a microscopically visible damage, so MV. You look at these cells under the microscope, you can see, ah, the cell is going through some really bad uh, irreversible stress and damage. Now, if you keep pushing the cell, then here you have visible damage, and these are I visible damage. So you can just look at it with your eye without even using microscope and then see, boom, this cell is messed up. So again, here is the problem. It's okay to add some problem because this cell can change how much output it's going to do and keep being okay. But once you pass this threshold, first cells will try to die because they don't want to hurt the, the, the team, you. But if you keep pushing the cell, the cells will start breaking down. Hard to see. But then cells will start accumulate more damages and now you can see the damage under microscope and eventually damage is going to be so large that you can see it with your naked eyes. Uh, let me tell you a bit about necrosis. As I said, necrosis is the sum of all the damages. Necrosis is the end result. There are many ways to get to this end. Uh, so I'm going to describe you four ways. First way is coagulative necrosis. Think of it as drying up of the cells. Here are a bunch of cells, and you cut the supply of oxygen or nutrient, and these cells will just stay where they are, but they're all dead. So structure is maintained, but the cells are dead. If you look at these uh, tissues that's going through coagulative necrosis under a microscope, you can see, for example, that's a muscle, and you can see an area, a dead area. And the next way of uh, necrosis is called the liquefactive. And liquefactive necrosis is kind of like opposite of coagulative necrosis. 
now you have a lot of infiltrates of immune cells and other stuff that come in and make this region inflamed. Basically, cleanup process happens, similar to the inflammation cleanup process. And the third necrosis pattern is caseous necrosis. And I think of caseous necrosis as a subtype of the liquefactive necrosis because in caseous necrosis, you have a bunch of macrophages come together to the site of issue. And these macrophages will start eating up the local area. And this is very common in a special lung infection. What happens is that you get pathogens. These macrophages will come, start eating the pathogens. A bunch of other immune cells will come in this liquefactive fashion. And they all start doing stuff and coagulating and getting together. And then you end up with this huge granuloma and these granulomas will secrete white uh, pus-like uh, uh, cheesy stuff. So equifactive uh, necrosis done by granulomas and with secretion of a bunch of white pus common in lung is this uh, caseous necrosis. And finally, um, there is a fat special necrosis and it's special to fat because it has to do with soaping. Uh, you put a bunch of long fat molecules and salt together and this becomes passively soap internally. And tissues like uh, omentum and the pancreas have a lot of fat cells. So these tissues are especially susceptible to um, fat soaping necrosis.